Hi, this is Carlos from Nordic, and today I'll be showing you a demo of our Nordic NRF5340 uh, dual core Cortex M33 uh, SOC. And uh, I'll be demonstrating how a Bluetooth LE stack, in this case, um, Zephyr's built in Bluetooth low energy stack, can be built, uh, split across two different cores um, so as to give the full Bluetooth low energy functionality uh, with each core performing a particular task. So, the way we'll do that, as you can see here in the diagram, um, we have have uh, an application core in our NRF5340 uh, that in this case will run the application and the Bluetooth low energy host, which is comprised of the upper layers of the uh, Bluetooth stack, and then uh, its own instance of the Zephyr kernel. Then on the bottom, we have the network core, the other core that's included in the 5340, uh, which in this case will contain the Bluetooth LE controller, uh, which is the uh, link layer and all the hard real-time software that's required to drive uh, the radio hardware, and of course, also its own Zephyr kernel. So again, what we'll do is we'll build Zephyr twice, uh, once per core, uh, in order to get two images that we can then flash into, into that SOC. Now, communicating the two cores, uh, we have some shared memory and then an interrupt um, in terms of hardware. But then um, for the protocols being used, uh, we have HCI, which is the host controller interface, um, which is a standard protocol to uh, communicate a host with a controller. Um, that usually typically runs uh, over USB or UART, but in this particular case, we're using OpenAMP, which is a framework that's also built into Zephyr and that implements a protocol uh, called RP Message, which uh, is designed uh, to run over shared memory uh, to communicate to cores, to, to create a pipe between two asymmetrical cores. So we're gonna do all of that uh, using the NRF5340 uh, preview development kit, as you can see uh, in the camera, and uh, the, you, perhaps you can see here the, the jumper wires that I've added. And the reason I've added those is that they allow me to tap into the UART of the network core so that then this UART output is redirected to the debugger chip. And uh, then that chip itself uh, directs all of that traffic up to the USB uh, host so that it allows me to see um, the debug messages from the network core uh, from, the, uh, from a terminal on my PC. So let's jump into that terminal and take a look at what we uh, need to do in order to accomplish this. So we'll start by building an image uh, for the network core. So to do that, all I need to do is uh, use the standard West commands, uh, the Zephyr West commands to build an image for the CPU net core. So the board that I'm using is the 5340 with the CPU net post fix so that Zephyr knows that we want to build an image for that. And the sample I'm using is the HCI RP message sample, which is a, a, a standard built-in sample that uh, all does is expose a Bluetooth low energy controller, standard Bluetooth low energy controller over this OpenAMP uh, slash RP message. Uh, framework. So the, the what this will do is to handle commands and data that come uh, from the application core, process them, uh, drive the radio, and then send back uh, other data or events back up uh, to the application core. So let's get that built. Um, and uh, once that's built, we'll flash it. Um, and one interesting thing, when you flash um, uh, one of the cores in the using the uh, the standard uh, West tool is that you only erase the non-volatile memory part uh, corresponding to the core that you're actually building for. So in this case, we're erasing the the part of the flash that's the corresponds to the network core, and then uh, writing the image that we've just built. So next, we need, to, need an image for the, the application core. So um, uh, in order to do that, we repeat the exact same procedure as before, except this time uh, we just uh, add the CPU app postfix. And instead of building a, a standard uh, uh, sort of uh, built-in uh, sample that's designed to expose a controller, we build an actual application, so one that's actually useful. In this case, the peripheral application, the Bluetooth peripheral application, which is just uh, a, a very common sample uh, to to uh, test Bluetooth functionality where you can connect to it and see uh, services and uh, browse it and see advertising and all of these that's uh, a common boilerplate uh, Bluetooth functionality. So let's get that built uh, and then flashed. 
So let's flash this. So just like before, here we'll only be erasing the part of the flash that corresponds to the application core. So, and then writing, of course, the second image we've generated. So now we have two images. Uh, next, I'm gonna use those jumper wires I showed earlier, uh, and I'm opening a, a terminal emulator here uh, to see the output of the UART that's connected to the network core. And I'm not seeing it yet, but if I reset the board now uh, using the NRJProc tool, I should be able to see um, uh, some debug output showing me how the RP message uh, layer is exchanging packets uh, back and forth between the application and the network core. This particular output comes from the network core, which uh, of course receives the commands and the data from the application core uh, and then responds back. But we can also see the output from the actual application core. And in order to do that, I've configured the sample uh, so that it uh, echoes all of the Bluetooth traffic, the HCI commands and events uh, out to the UART uh, so that we can analyze those using the standard BTMON tool uh, from uh, BlueZ from Linux. So that allows us to get a full output, decoded output of all this traffic, uh, and then intermixed with actual log messages from the application core. So I've run this tool now, which connects to the uh, corresponding serial port, uh, and then I can reset the chip again. Uh, this resets the whole chip, um, both cores, so that as to see that output. Now we see as you can see here, we see all of the decoded output. So we see HCI commands and then the corresponding events. Uh, and But we also see, uh, again, interleaved the output that's just logging, standard logging output from the Bluetooth stack. So this is a very useful uh, feature of the Zephyr Bluetooth stack, which allows you to uh, decode in real time and uh, uh, replay all of the uh, commands and events that have gone through the between the host and controller uh, in a decoded fashion. So that they're very, very easy to inspect and they allow you to debug if there's unexpected behavior. So the next thing I can do is I can take my mobile phone, which uh, you cannot see, but uh, then I'll discover the Bluetooth peripheral that's cur currently running in this NR53 and I'll connect to it. So I'm doing that now. So as you can see, there's some traffic here and uh, there's some uh, ATT traffic. And here we see an early connection update. And all of that happened uh, with the application core running the actual application and the host and the network core uh, running the, the controller. So that's interesting because uh, it gives you an overview of the communication, both in, from the low level perspective with the RP message message traffic logging, and also seeing the fully decoded packets from uh, um, uh, the HCI decoded packets from the perspective of the, of the host. So this uh, shows how Zephyr can be built in order to uh, uh, apply to a two core configuration where the two cores are asymmetric and one of the cores is designed to run an application. The other one is designed to run a very low level software that uh, is uh, designed to drive the radio and to um, implement a link layer uh, and all of that with uh, open source software. So there's no uh, proprietary libraries here. Everything was built from source uh, and uh, we built two images that were flashed into the, the two different cores. So thank you very much for watching and see you next time.